Hi and welcome back to another episode of The Bourbon Pour. I'm Jordan. And I'm Brian. And today we have a special episode for you. We were challenged by SLB Drinks. Our good friend Kurt Ludington uh, challenged us to this. What are the most interesting whiskeys in your collection? Now, mine and Brian, you could combine our collections and we still would not equate to the interesting things that Kurt has. Yeah, so, well, I think he has around 600, 700 bottles, something like that. Probably so. even more than that. Yeah. I don't know, but um, so. And, and and like I said, the, the mention from SLB is just amazing. Yeah. Uh, we've we've gotten to know him. Jordan is is, a, is Patreon and mm -hmm. friends with him. Right. Uh, he came to he came to our bourbon event, and it's just he's been so gracious to us. And we just we've just recently started to to, to do this channel. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was telling Jordan before the before we, we were filming that uh, they're, they're so big, uh, and if, if this is SLB right here, we're like a little gnat flying around. Without uh, wings. Without wings, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, we're not even uh, flying. So we're, we're wanting to take off, but but we appreciate the call out, uh, and we definitely want to do a video mm -hmm. uh, and get yeah. that out there. Yeah. That's, what, so that's what we're doing. Yeah. Today. Appreciate your friendship, Kurt, and uh, really appreciate you uh, giving us a shout out. So um, let's, I'll let you kick it off, Brian. Some uh, interesting whiskeys in your collection, and there's a couple ways that we've interpreted how to do this so we kind of have like a standard you know Kurt mentioned um, you know a, a bourbon or a whiskey that you could spend an hour with and every time you nose it, it it brings out different elements every time you taste it as different elements every time you revisit it you discover something new so there's a few that are like that mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, some in your collection are that way but uh, that's one way to and Interpret it. So let's uh, let's get going. Okay. Okay. Well, the first bottle I, I chose was the is the is the Bardstown uh, the Discover Series 11. Mm -hmm. uh, that was last year's uh, release. Uh, if you've had it, you, you know it's it's phenomenal. It's a, it's a, it is a little on the expensive side. Sure. Uh, some of the ones I've, I'm pulling out here are probably these are my my favorite mm -hmm. uh, tasting wise. Uh, but this one just knocks your socks off. It's mm -hmm. it, is, it is so uh, phenomenal. Uh, I think if you could add this to your collection, this would be one I would I would add. And I wish I had, I had a little bit more left in my bottle because uh, yeah. this is so good. I keep yeah. on going back yeah. to it, even if it, I think it's around one hundred thirty five dollars a bottle. But yeah. it is so good. Right. Uh, and if you're in that price range, it's worth uh, adding it's worth to it. So, yeah. uh, first for me, and I might get a little bit laughs on this one. I don't. Or I don't know. Um, Woodford Reserve Double Oak. So uh, each time that I have this one. When I nose this bourbon, each time I pull it up to my nose to, to smell, I get something new, uh, or maybe not something new, but I can get different things. I can pick mm -hmm. up so much out of it. it. A lot of times it smells like pure maple syrup. It smells like pancakes. It smells like a really good barrel char, obviously. Right. Uh, same with the palate. It, it jumps around, and it's just every single time I have it, and it's not one I actually really go to frequently, but... It's just so interesting to me that a bourbon can uh, give you that much, mm -hmm. and each time Woodford Reserve Double Oak always does. Yeah, I so agree. It's, I, it's, I put that in. Get a lot of different elements. Yeah, out of yeah, it. Uh, just a phenomenal. sweet, sweet yeah. elements. Sweet so elements, like, and it. I love bourbons that smell like maple syrup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so yeah, okay, good stuff. Well, the and so my second bottle would be. Uh, so these next two that I'm going to be doing are probably my. These are my favorite bottles that I have as far yeah. as taste profiles although the top the three here but uh, this one and the next one are gonna gonna be battling for the best bottles that I've ever had so this yeah. was would be the Elijah Craig uh, this was a C923 I was lucky enough to get one of those uh, you can see I've, I've I've hit it a few times and I've sampled it out uh, but it is so good is this is this one had the had the 12 year or maybe 13 thir 13 I think I think yeah, 13, 13 almost 14 years yeah. or 13 and a half years old age statement <laughs> it is so good and and if you like elijah craig which uh their their barrel proofs are just amazing they're always good mm -hmm. even if you get a bad batch it's not bad it's mm -hmm. still good stuff right uh but you get so much goodness out of that that's on a uh, different level yeah. yeah and there's one idiot behind the bar tonight who did not buy one of those <laughs> <laughs> and we see that one person behind one. the bar so has one so Jordan, process right? of elimination <laughs> leads you to me but uh Phenomenal bottle. Uh, one for me, uh, Peerless Small Batch, and uh, this one. The only the only downside on this one is a lot of times I feel like it's a little thin and not a lot of viscosity to it, even though it's 111 proof. But for similar reasons to Woodford uh, Double Oak, every time I nose this and taste this, it just seems like it it changes frequently. There's, you know, one minute it, it smells like a barrel char, one mm -hmm. minute it, it smells, you know, like heavy caramel, next it smells vanilla, 
and, and it just it just seems to to change frequently and I to me that's super interesting and, and this is just their standard small batch you know mm -hmm. this isn't the double oak this isn't the single barrel it's not the double oak rye anything crazy like that it's just their standard offering and to me it's a uh, worthy of being included on a list of interesting right. whiskeys yeah. and bourbons. And they're country. doing some good stuff there. Pure yep. place. The place is amazing. Yep. And, yep. Uh, they, they put out some good offers. Right. Now that they're, they're double oped. Yes, yes, that's, yes. That's yes. in a whole other category. Yes. yes. So, okay. Well, the, the next one I've got would be, uh, it would be King, King of Kentucky. Uh, I, I lucked into this one. Uh, I was able to, to win. I won the lottery. Uh, to, to be able to write to buy and, and <laughs> the lottery yeah I did it the lottery uh, and I, I bought that at, at the total total wine and more I was able to get that um, Jordan pointed something out earlier I'd never noticed and this is bottle number 46 of 111 I didn't realize it was that uh, so few so right. few when they offered this out it was a 14 year old uh, this came it was 2021 I believe is when this came out. Uh, this stuff is so good. Yeah. Everything about Brown Foreman that you, if you like Brown Foreman, this brings out every element yeah. you could think of. Yeah. Uh, it amplifies it by ten. And Brian's uh, been gracious enough to share it with me a couple times. And yeah, I, I kept this. I kept this closed until we, we had a bourbon event last yeah. uh, this last year, uh, and I shared that with uh, with 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 thanks like seven people that were able <laughs> to, to win the rights to come over and sip it yeah. with me. Yeah. And that was the first time I had had it. Right. It was it was so good. Right. Right. Uh, I hope that stays around for another maybe five years but i'm gonna have a hard time keeping that, that <laughs> yeah, around so. sure sure um, you want you want to nurse it around so uh next bottle here actually my next two are kind of they're they come from the same distillery and they're unique because these are probably bottles that really i don't know why anyone else would have them but i, I can share with you real quick why i have them but this one uh, in particular so this is from the um let's see actually i'll have to read this one the hersenian distillery out of uh, somewhere in Germany and uh, the first one I'm, I'm putting here is um, the Glen Else which is their single malt cask strength and this is non chill filtered and the funny thing about this one is this has a tie to SLB because I gave Kurt a sample of this and uh, I had ran out of um, sample bottles so I had to pour it in a uh, 200 milliliter wild turkey <laughs> uh, <laughs> bottle and Kurt uh, use that to pull a, a trick on Trenton in a in a blind tasting. So um, that's that's that bottle. And oh, I do remember that. It, yes, it, there, yeah. right. And so um, just the fact that this is a German single malt whiskey, um, I think that that's just a, a really unique thing. It is good. It's kind of got a, a really good butterscotch note to it that I really like, both on the nose and the palate. And um, obviously, no one out there is probably going to find it. But uh, <laughs> I had a German exchange student live with me in high school and he's come back to visit uh, several times and he usually brings me a bottle of whiskey so very cool yeah that's what he brought okay well my last one i'm going to kind of do a little bit of a twist on uh what kurt said in the in our invitation basically he, he meant he had talked about the, the most interesting guy uh in the world that's that kind of dos Equis commercial dos Equis guy that yeah. kind of gave him the the idea for the for the, for the video so uh, so this one I, I we've reviewed this this bottle and it, it is so good but one of the notes i made out of it one of the, the comments i made during our our uh Discussion on it was I thought it made a great old fashioned. <laughs> so I think uh, if I was ever to meet the most interesting guy in the world, I think that if I asked him to make an old fashioned for me, he'd pull out James James E. Peppers, right, right. and he would make me an old fashioned yeah. with this, and I think it would just be amazing. Yeah. I'd Stellar be, one. And I'd be sitting there thinking, this guy is the most interesting guy I've ever <laughs> met in my life because he's making me an old fashioned yeah. out of James E. Peppers. So and I, an interesting looking bottle. Yeah, right? great yeah. bottle, and it, yeah. it is. It's a solid bottle, uh, not in the category of these, but but. Just something good and, and uh, it's different uh, yeah. so I just thought I would throw that one in yeah so. yeah uh, last one for me comes from the same distillery as this one so that uh, Harrison distilling company I probably pronounced it two different ways two different times but this one is their uh, the journey so this is a, a single malt uh, non chill filtered uh, crafted by hand in the heart of Germany and this is matured in the best fortifying fortified wine cask so this is a, a finished single malt whiskey i have not actually opened this yet jens brought this jens is my german uh, exchange student he's my brother actually um, he brought this to me in november he surprised me with a visit actually uh was a, a complete surprise to me my whole family was in on it and uh cool. he, he came and surprised me that was a pretty special moment he brought this with me uh thanksgiving i want to say 2013 
he visited and he brought this bottle and we killed it in one night with Eric's <laughs> family. And that was a, a really good memory. I still have the empty bottle. Um, and as you know, we always say here to share your whiskey, uh, I was not mad a bit about killing a bottle that I would have to wait on an, um, over 10 years later to get, <laughs> to get another one. Back. Actually, ten, right at 10 years yeah, to get it cool. again. So that's a really interesting whiskey for me. Might not be maybe the the flavor profile that always matches my palate, but special to me for multiple different ways and worthy of being the, one of the interesting ones in my collection. So. Right. All right. Well, yeah, we out did. of this lineup, what do you think, Brian? What's what's the what's your favorite? And I think I know what you're going to say. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to beat the King of Kentucky. So, <laughs> right. Uh, it's, that was definitely. But these top, these are my top three that of yeah. all of what I've tasted. Yeah. Those yeah. are probably my favorite. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely King of Kentucky. Yeah. To... Yeah. Yeah. Out of this collection, that would be my favorite too. So, uh, <laughs> all right. And I appreciate you sharing it with me, and uh, really appreciate you, Kurt, and SLB Drinks uh, for. For this challenge, this was a really fun thing for us, and a big thing for us too, because you know we're just getting started, and uh, right. to get mentioned by by a channel like SLB, uh, have you all have the all the respect of the yes. world from and us? We are young in our journey. Yeah, uh, we were able to. We recently met met a couple uh, of ch of channels out there, so we kind of wanted to, to to maybe send this challenge out to them as well. Uh, the guys at Bourbon Kingdom, they came and did an event with us recently, and, and also uh, the Bourbon Hunch. Yeah, yeah, Bourbon uh, Hunch. They were, he was there as well. So yeah. uh, we appreciate them coming to our event. Uh, we want to share this with them. Yeah. Uh, and we haven't yeah. met Baker Drinks, uh, but they've subscribed to our channel. We've subscribed to theirs. So we're going to challenge Baker Drinks as well. Let's yeah, just keep yeah, this going, definitely. do our part to uh, keep it going. Uh, I think this is a lot of fun. And, cool. and to get involved with other channels is, is pretty cool because, you know, you don't have to actually meet face to face to to do these things it's fun to interact uh, mm -hmm. over over uh, bourbon on YouTube so I think it's pretty cool so yeah, uh, with that even though I'm out <laughs> uh, of, of whiskey um, as we end every single episode uh, when you're with your family and your friends always share, share your, your whiskey, whiskey.